Alrighty, guys. Uh, unfortunately, this is how we're going to have to do our last lecture before your final. I'm sorry. I am alive. And so are the babies. Um, they're not here yet as of Thursday evening at 9 o'clock. So, feel good there. Still got them inside me. Um, we're going to get as far as we can through the principles of disease and epidemiology. And then I'll give you all a review. And that's what we're going to test over for our finals. But it's not going to be anything too crazy or scary. So don't worry about it. Um, but you should have notes in front of you. And we'll go through the lecture as if we're in class. There's just not a nice, solidly round pregnant lady standing in front of you. So anywho. So I'll have this uploaded to my YouTube account um, and I'll share the link with y'all and everything. So if you miss something, you need to go back and review what you can. Um, otherwise, we're going to get started. To me, we're getting into more of the more interesting stuff of microbiology instead of all the uh, silly how the cell works and stuff to me that's a lot more boring this is a lot more interesting <clears throat> so um so hopefully you'll find it more interesting and you won't be falling asleep or getting bored anywho so let's get started so we'll talk about pathology infection and disease defining the terms figuring out what all this means and then we'll progress from there so pathology, um, patho means disease and lology is study of. So this would be the study of diseases. Um, pathology is, con uh, is concerned with three different things. One being the etiology, which is the cause of disease. The second is pathogenesis, which is how it develops. And then the third is how it changes or affects the body through structural functional changes. So we want to know what caused the disease at first. Was it a microorganism? Was it a um, something else in the environment that caused it? How the disease progresses and um, changes over time? And then how it actually affects our body? Does it just give us a fever or does it kill us we need to know those things so that's what pathology is concerned with so some, most of the time we use infection and disease as uh, two terms meaning the same thing but they are different so infection is talking about a microorganism that actually comes into our body and colonizes whereas disease is talking about the results of something else happening. So if an infection occurs and changes happen in our body, then that would be considered disease. So anything altering our state of health is going to um, be considered disease. Okay. Now that we have those kind of terms down, um, we can look at what is normally in our body. So we're going to look at normal microbiota. Um, so most of the time when we're first born, we have no microorganisms living in us at all. It's not until we hit air and breathe in stuff, get exposed to different things, do we start to have microorganisms living within us. So for the most part, Typically, the human body contains one to the one times ten to the thirteenth power, which is a lot of dad gum zeros of microorganisms that are inside of our body, and then ten to the fourteenth power of bacterial cells that live on the body, which is ten times more than human cells that we actually have. So we definitely live in a world of 
all kinds of creepy critters crawling around us all the time. But we will see that these sometimes help us and not just hurt us. So um, organisms that live in our body that do not cause us to have any sort of disease or problems is called the uh, normal microbiome normal normal microbiota or it says less commonly referred to as normal flora that's the way i've always heard it i don't like that other word because apparently i can't say it um so i always refer to it as normal flora but either way it's talking about the same thing and then we have other microorganisms that'll just come into our system every once in a while and they're going to be called the transient microbiota. Um, they're not going to stay with us for a long time, but they're there. So let's take a closer look at the normal flora. So those are going to find, those are going to be found um, in certain regions and we will see in a little bit that if they're outside of the region that they're supposed to be located in, then they can cause this disease. So they're not necessarily found throughout the whole body just because it lives with us peacefully. So there's different factors that um, are going to affect what kind of microorganisms, microorganisms that we have in us such as our nutrients and physical and chemical factors. Um, so as long as we have appropriate energy source for them, uh, the temperature, pH, oxygen, carbon dioxide uh, is good for them, then obviously they can live in us. Um, but then dependent on the host, such as age, nutritional status, um, health status, and things of that nature, that's going to determine whether they thrive or not within us because based on how the host is doing. Um, so in research, they have actually done tests where they raised animals in a micro-free or germ-free world. And it shows that they aren't necessarily absolute for life in that you can live in a germ-free world and be okay, but it also showed that the animals that lived in the germ-free world had underdeveloped immune systems and were susceptible to infections and other serious diseases. They also required more calories and vitamins than the other animals because we will see that some bacteria within us actually help us produce certain um, vitamins and minerals and if we don't have them we would have to intake that some other way so looking at the relationship between the normal flora and us as the host um, so you can have the normal Flora that's there that can benefit the host by preventing the overgrowth of other organisms. So it's the microbial antagonism or the competitive exclusion. Um, so this kind of bacteria is going to help us keep a handle on other bacteria that lives within us to make sure that they don't start reproducing out of. Uh, to where they're not contained to where it would cause disease to us. So a consequence of this is that the microorganisms can protect the host against other microorganisms that could cause disease in us. Um, and then so when this is somehow messed up, you can get diseases from that. Um, so examples here is that you can have the Candidia albancus, which is yeast infections. So that is going to be, um, you can get that in the throat. Um, and that would be because some 